morning. Listen. I slept by the train tracks. Yeah. Funny though, it's been super nice. It's, I don't know, I love trains. And it rumbles the van when I <laughs> when they go by. I slept across from where I thought I was gonna sleep last night. Um, it ended up getting really busy down that street. I guess that restaurant got super packed. So I just drove down across the tracks into this beautiful new residential area. It's flipping gorgeous down here. Anyway, it's like 4.30 in the morning and we're gonna get up. We are just leaving Fort Langley and heading into the bigger town of Langley because I'm looking for a gym. This boy needs to have a shower, so I'm fierce this morning and grab a coffee. It's just me driving with you guys and fat boy Disco's still sleeping in bed. Oh, maybe not, here he is. Da -da -da! Morning, buddy. Nice to see you make an appearance this time in the morning. That's a pretty rare one. You, you sleep for an hour after I get up. Hi, bro. Ugh, leave me alone, Dad. It's too early. <laughs> Such a geek, buddy. We just finished at the gym. Hold on. I'm gonna fall over, guys. We just left the gym, had a shower, gave myself a haircut. Anyway, on the way here, I drove by a sign that said Derby's Reach. I've never been down there, so we're gonna go down there. It's like, I'm guessing it's just a park by the river. So let's do that this morning. Let's go check it out. Seatbelt. Sleeping Bulldog, check. Okay, the sign back there says that the water is that way, like the Derby Reach actual park, but the heritage area is this way. Trust that stomach feeling, it says go to the heritage area. It's so beautiful down here, like farmlands and old houses and super beautiful. Especially this time in the morning, it's great. This area is amazing. <laughs> this go, <laughs> just so peaceful. You can hear the birds. It's like still only about 6.30 in the morning. That was disco, by the way. You bundle of grossness. Pick up the dice, give it a roll. You never really know which way to go. Feel it inside, feel the spark. Lift you up when you're falling apart. We think we know it all. We stand 10 feet small. With our head under, head under ground. I think I've seen. Not a bad place to go for a little stroll first thing in the morning. <laughs> a lot of mosquitoes out here though and the mosquitoes are actually pretty bad. Back there when I was trying to get some nice smooth shots of like the little farm equipment and stuff like that that was sitting out there. I'm sitting there and I'm trying to like, because I don't have a gimbal or anything, I just use a tripod on my phone. So any moving shots you see are just me moving super slow. They got this mosquito bite me on the forehead and I'm trying no so hard not to shake it off. I don't want to wreck the shot. Does somebody know of a place where your heart doesn't sink like a stone when you're naked and broken, nowhere to go? The 
Does somebody, somebody, somebody know? Does somebody, somebody, somebody know of a place where the green isn't covered by snow every time? This Derby Reach Regional Park in Langley, BC is actually pretty cool. There are so many trails up and around throughout all the heritage area. And from what I understand is that all these trails here go all the way into Fort Langley where you guys seen that yesterday. And I think the reason why I'm never really a river guy, I think I told you I'm not much of a river guy, because the river we got here is brown. <laughs> it's kind of gross. The van smells like, smells like French fries. <laughs> um, I just clean the house with vinegar. Every time I do that, it always smells like French fries. Just gonna make myself a coffee. Everything in my van is very disorganized. I got no organization going on in my drawers. They're just kind of like, whatever. $3. Yeah, I got these from a dollar store too, but I just thought these were like legit. What? No, oh, thank you, buddy. Okay. I gotta clean this too. The original plan today was to be adventurous, to go see things and go adventure around. And well, after breakfast this morning, the sun's starting to peek out. I just wanna camp it out here for the day and enjoy a nice relaxing afternoon. So that's what I'm gonna do. But, because I got something on my mind, we're gonna make a shift in this video and talk about coolers and getting started in van life and choosing the right things before you spend money on stuff you just don't need. The reason why I wanna talk about this is because I'm a little frustrated with my little Pelican. When I first jumped in the van, I had a large Pelican cooler, like a 45 quart monster, but it was bigger because it had that two inch layer all the way around it to keep those the ice cold for like seven to ten days it was a beast I bought it for 200 bucks on Craigslist I ended up selling it because when I decided to actually put furniture in the van having something with that kind of a footprint was just a little bit too big and unpractical at that point in time so I bought this little 20 core pelican it is one durable beast and that's what pelican is all about is building durable coolers but it only holds about two of these, a six pack of beer, and some condiments and two bags of ice, and that thing is as full as full can be. Has it done me well for space so far? It's been good. Problem is, is that when I bought it, I automatically assumed, because it was attached to the Pelican name, that it was gonna hold ice for longer than it did. I figured maybe five days. I should have just looked up, <laughs> looked at it a little bit more on Amazon instead of just making the impulse buy. Anyway, it holds ice for two days, three days at the freaking max, which kind of sucks, which means buying ice more often. The size of the cooler would have been great if I didn't start cooking in the van. Now that I'm cooking in the van, there's more things I would like to cook, which means more stuff needs to go into the cooler. I really wanted bacon and eggs and stuff this morning, or would have just settled with like scrambled eggs with vegetables and mushrooms and a little bit of cheese on top. But I don't got room for eggs. I don't got room to store the rest of that stuff that needs to be refrigerated. I do now, but when I went grocery shopping, this thing was full. So I could use a 30 quart, would have been perfect for my needs now. So Pelican, if you're watching, you could have this cooler back, my gift to you, but you gotta send me out a 30 quart one that holds ice for longer than two days. All right, Pelican, are we cool with that? Awesome. Pelican, if you're watching, my shipping address is in the description of this video. That would be super rad. <laughs> anyway, that's probably never gonna happen. So I'm gonna ride this cooler out until I get totally frustrated with it, then hopefully sell this on Craigslist, redeem back some of that $200, and then buy something a little bit bigger. For me, having a cooler is way more convenient for my lifestyle than having a 12 volt fridge that requires power 
and you know power may require solar both of those things I don't have in my van my van is very simple and I like it just the way it is I don't know if I really want something that's going to be constantly demanding a small amount of power all day long because well the roof of my van is super clean and I like that the van just looks like a regular van right now I'm not at that point in this lifestyle where I'm ready to put like all that stuff on the roof so when that time comes then maybe but as of right now I enjoy having the cooler because I can move it I chose to put it back here because if I ever go to the beach I pull the cooler out put it there I got my couch back ah, I can sit down kick my feet out on the cooler and just enjoy a day looking outside of the beach or right here looking at nature it's convenient hugely and if I'm ever at a van meetup, I just grab the cooler, take it over to where everybody is with a cooler full of beer. Yes. So the convenient side of having something mobile like this is really good. And that for me is a major, major selling factor about having a portable cooler. Because I owned the larger cooler, I know what it's like to have something with a large footprint in the living space of the van. I don't have room for anything like that and even if I were to get a 12 volt fridge I don't think I ever would because I don't have anywhere I can put it in my van that's not going to wreck the functionality of what I have going on. Having the back of the van with the two cabinets here is just super functional. Having a moving footstool and the capability of taking my cooler to the beach is super functional. My living space is awesome just the way it is I wouldn't want to destroy or wreck the appearance or the functionality of what's going on there's a space between the front seat which I am NOT ever gonna put anything in because that's disco that's this guy's little favorite spot to lie down he likes to sit there while I drive put his chin on my lap and just hang out with me and I'm not gonna take that away from him nor am I gonna take those moments away from me just to put a cooler there so because I, I pondered that I pondered putting a cooler building like a console with a little stair for disco to get in there I'm not gonna do that so having the portable cooler throwing ice in it once every handful of days or week no big deal but I really wish I would have had something a little bigger but if you look at it this way I didn't know I was gonna start cooking in the van cooking in the van just kind of happened and I think what happened was being in this lifestyle it's just natural to slowly start cooking more and more in the van I was a city boy before this <laughs> I didn't know cooking at home everything I got was downstairs at the street corner you know an easy slice of pizza or across the street to the breakfast place for breakfast no cooking at home but being outside in nature at a park like I am now with the sun beating on my face it's just it's becoming a part of who I am and it's more natural at that point to start cooking in nature right so think about this stuff before you go out and buy it you know if I was you if you're gonna start keep it simple go buy a cheap one of these on Craigslist for like $20 not you won't buy the Pelican one for 20 but just a cheap cooler just to figure out what you need for size and stuff before you make an investment on something monstrous like this because in Canada these are 190 freaking dollars that's a lot of money for something that only holds ice for a few days they might be indestructible but sure hell ain't worth that freaking price tag for three days worth of ice I could buy a $40 cooler that'll function just the same the only reason why I chose the Pelican is because well I liked my first one anyway that's all I wanted guys we're gonna stop talking because I'm gonna go enjoy this sunshine while it's out I'm scared that the clouds are gonna roll in and I'm already sweating um, these clouds are already starting to roll over I want to get as much of the sunshine in as I can because a little vitamin D is good for you so thanks for hanging out guys and be smart about your purchases don't buy things if you're not sure about it yet or buy the cheap stuff until you can figure it out I love the cooler and I like the idea and the portability of it I'm buying ice is a petty expense compared to paying rent hydro and all that other stuff that goes on with having a home so ice is, is a petty fee so no big freaking deal all right guys I'll talk to you soon see you later